What you're looking at is the result of importing, exporting, and reusing the same piece of footage several times. The only difference is on the left, I was using the video codec of H.264, and on the right, I was using ProRes. And hopefully this extreme example illustrates one of the reasons why I think you should be exporting ProRes versions to archive your most important projects, just in case you wanna use that footage later on in other videos. So with that in mind, here are five things that I would do as a video editor after the project's done if you wanted to create high quality, low loss assets that may be used in future projects. Number one, save a ProRes version of your video export. Typically, if you're uploading to YouTube or any other social media website, you're gonna be using H.264 as the video codec, which is great because H.264 is compressed and optimized for web streaming. Now, if you were to export in something like ProRes, this will maintain the most image quality and color. Now, you could be asking yourself, why isn't everything just exported in Apple ProRes? Well, that's because the file sizes are huge. For example, here's the same 4K export that's only 33 seconds. As an H.264 export, it's only 102 megabytes. But if you go to the ProRes version, it's 2.3 gigabytes. And you can imagine if you have an even longer video, this would be even bigger. And that's because ProRes files aren't designed to be streamed across the web. They're designed for playback in a video editor. So it's best to use that ProRes export file in future projects than your H.264 one that you uploaded to the internet. To further illustrate this point, this particular video file I uploaded to my YouTube channel and then downloaded it from YouTube and put it in Premiere Pro. And you can see the crazy artifacting that's going on as I scroll around the timeline. So if you wanna avoid this somewhat scary situation altogether, here's how I would export a ProRes video file. Here I have my final sequence, go to the export tab. I'm gonna go to format and scroll on down to QuickTime. Underneath video, we wanna go to video codec. I think Apple ProRes 422 is more than enough for what we're going to be doing. So I'll click that. I'll go up here, type in underscore ProRes, and I'll hit export. Now we have a high quality version that we can use in our future projects. The next tip is to create audio stems. And if you're unfamiliar with audio stems, all we're doing is separating the audio into different parts. One pro tip to do this quickly is to have an organized timeline. All of these green clips are my VO, all of the orange clips are my sound effects, and all of the pink clips are music. And now I wanna create my VO audio stem. To do that, I'm just going to solo the tracks where my VO clips are. Go over to export and underneath format, I'm going to scroll to waveform audio. Underneath the audio, I think a sampling rate of 48 Hertz is fine. The channels are stereo. My sample size, I'm going to switch to 24 bit. For this, I wanna make sure that I title them correctly. Underscore stem underscore VO and hit export. Now continue this process for each part of the audio. How many stems you make is completely up to you in your situation. But for this, I'm gonna pair all of my sound effects together, all of my music together, and say you had something like dialogue, you could also do an underscore dialogue. One last stem to create is everything put together and call that underscore mix. So I'm not going to solo anything. This is basically just the audio as is for the entire export. To recap, this is what we've done. I have a ProRes and stems folder. In there, I have the ProRes export along with my stems of a mix, music, sound effects, and VO. What this allows me to do is if I ever needed to use this video file in the future, I can now bring in the video file and my audio stems, know that the quality is going to be great, and I can also solo out things like just the sound effects and cut out the music VO and mix if I wanted to. Or if I wanted to hear my VO only. That's right, it's cinematic coffee B-roll. <laughs> Slow motion perfection. I have access to that and I'm not stuck with just the mix. Now the ability to separate the audio out should also be applied somewhat to the video. And what I mean by this is for tips three and four. And that is to export a ProRes version that does not have any graphics. And if you need to, for tip four, export a ProRes version that doesn't have any color correction. Again, I wanna say only do any of these steps if you think it's necessary. Personally, on bigger projects, creating versions without graphics or color correction has helped me save time whenever I needed to recall that export on other future projects. 
Now, the last tip that I have to give you is the whole reason why I wanted to create this video and it's hands down one of the coolest things that I know how to do when it comes to exporting inside Premiere Pro. What I'm going to show you how to do is take all of your audio stems and pair them to a ProRes export. So when you bring that file onto your timeline, everything is one video file with all of the stems underneath it separated out. But is it necessary? I don't know, if you did need to send this file to another editor or somebody else that you're working with this project on, it just makes it easier because it's one video file. To start with, I'm gonna drag my ProRes video file and my audio stems into Premiere Pro. Now we're gonna create a new sequence with multi-channel audio. So I'm gonna go to File, New, Sequence. Make sure the sequence presets match whatever your sequence was. For this project, it was 4K HD 16 by 9, 23.976. If you need to switch those, just go over to settings and switch all the parameters here to what you need them to be. If you don't know what the sequence settings are of your project, don't worry, we'll get to that in a second. What we do need to switch though is the tracks. So I'm going to click on tracks and underneath mix, I want to make sure that it's not stereo. We want multi channel and the number of channels is going to be up to however many stems that you have. So for this one, I have one, two, three, four stems, which all of those stems are stereo channels, meaning each stem comes with two channels, a left and a right. So the number of channels that I would need is actually eight because I'm taking two channels per file times four altogether, equaling eight. So right here underneath number of channels, I'm gonna do eight. Next, if you want to change the track names, you can. Track type is standard. The next thing that we wanna change is our output assignments. We wanna click on this. The first output assignment is going to be one and two. That'll be the mix. The next one though, we'll click on this little icon. And instead of it being one and two, we want this to be three and four because we want our VO, our sound effects and music all to go on different channels. This will be three and four. Our sound effects will go on five and six. Make sure you uncheck one and two. And our music will go on channels seven and eight. I'll just name this sequence ProRes Mix and Stems. At this point, if you didn't get your sequence settings correct, all you need to do is pull your ProRes file onto the sequence and once you drag it in, it should come up with a pop-up window asking if you wanna change or keep the same settings. And what I would do is change them to whatever your ProRes export was. And now what I'm gonna do is instead of using the mix from the ProRes, I'm going to take my mix stem and drag it directly underneath my video where the mix needs to go. And then I'll take my VO, put it on the VO track, take the sound effects, put it on the sound effects track and take the music and put it on the music track. One thing you're going to notice when I hit play here is the VU meters are a little different. Ooh, what do we have here? Are these the... So if I mute this, all of these channels are still playing except my mix and you can see it over here. If you want to be able to hear them, you have to click the monitor button right here. Vibe. The coffee's a vibe. That slow motion one... And this is creating a multi-channel video. This will make more sense once we get to our export window. So I'm gonna highlight these, create my in and out points, go to my export window. We wanna go to format, QuickTime, underneath video. Again, I'm just gonna do Apple ProRes. And now we wanna go down to audio. Click more. And here is where we need to add our output channels. So it's still stereo, but we need to add three more channels. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And I'm gonna change all these to stereo. And now what we've done is essentially told Premiere Pro, export this with four tracks of audio and each one of these tracks will be stereo. The first one to appear will be one and two, which is our mix, then our VO, then our sound effects, then our music. Hopefully this will make more sense once I export it. I'm going to do 24 bit again. Now I'll hit export. And here is that ProRes mix and stems video. The great thing about this is when I click and drag it into Premiere Pro and then drag it down onto my timeline, on top of just the video coming down, you should see eight channels of audio come down with it. Watch this. Boop. So here is that ProRes video with the audio stems attached to it. The great thing about this too is that if I were to create a new sequence with this, here is a stereo sequence, so I can treat this. That's right, it's cinematic coffee b-roll. Just like a normal piece of footage that has separated audio with it. 
super cool feature. And again, I don't know how necessary it is to do that. I just wanted to showcase this process to you in case you wanted to use it yourself. If it is helpful, please leave that thumbs up. One part of archiving that I did not cover is if you wanted to share a project or just archive a project and only keep the clips that you used in your final sequence. If you wanna learn more about that in Premiere Pro, I have a video about it right here. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.